everyone. I'm Kevin Elson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from Italy. To mark the 50th anniversary of Padre Pio's death and 100 years since he received the stigmata, Pope Francis visited the saint's birthplace, Pietrelcina, Italy. The Pope celebrated Mass outside the shrine with about 30,000 people after visiting children in the cancer ward of the House for the Relief of Suffering, which is a hospital St. Pio founded. In his homily, the Pope reflected on three words that both summarized the day's readings, and he said the life of Padre Pio, prayer, smallness, and wisdom. Cari fratelli e sorelle di Pietrecina e della Diocesi di Benevento, voi annoverate San Pio tra le figure più belle e luminose del vostro popolo. Questo umile frate Cappuccino ha stupito il mondo con la sua vita tutta dedita alla preghiera e all'ascolto paziente dei fratelli sulle cui sofferenze riversava come balsamo la carità di Cristo. Imitando il suo eroico esempio, le sue virtù, voi possiate diventare pure strumento dell'amore di Dio, dell'amore di Gesù verso i più deboli. Al tempo stesso, considerando la sua incondizionata fedeltà alla Chiesa, darete testimonianza di comunione, perché solo la comunione cioè essere sempre uniti, in pace fra noi, la comunione fra noi, perché la comunione solo edifica e costruisce. In news from the Vatican on the feast of St. Joseph, Pope Francis ordained three new bishops who will serve as papal nuncios or ambassadors for the Holy See. The new bishops are Archbishop Jose Betancourt, a priest from the Archdiocese of Ottawa and former head of diplomatic protocol for the Vatican, Archbishop Alfred Zareb, a Maltese, who was General Secretary of the Vatican Secretariat for Economy and also served as Assistant Personal Secretary to Pope Benedict XVI, and Archbishop Valdemar Samatog, a Korea Vatican diplomat from Poland. After reading the ritual homily for the ordination of bishops during the Mass, Pope Francis also added a few comments explaining to the bishops the importance of prayer, the importance to care for their priests, and the importance to avoid the temptation to be princes. He said that they are not chosen to be involved with worldly affairs, business, or politics, but rather they were chosen to minister to men and women in things related to God. In news from Rome, Pope Francis met with some 300 young people March 19th, opening a week-long meeting in preparation for October's Synod of Bishops. The gathering took place at the Legionnaires of Christ's Maria Mater Ecclesia College in Rome. The young people were delegates of their national bishops' conferences. Others represented a variety of Catholic movements or ministries, including religious life. But the Vatican also invited delegates from other Christian churches and other religions, including Islam, and young people who described themselves as non-believers. Pope Francis told the young people People that they are the ones who can help the church fight the logic of it's always been done this way, which he described as a poison. Pope Francis devoted an entire morning to 300 young people from around the world. The Holy Father wanted to help them prepare the Synod of Bishops on the faith and vocational discernment scheduled for this coming October. The Pope told them the church needs them to speak clearly and fearlessly. Vi invito allora in questa settimana a esprimervi con franchezza e in tutta libertà. L'ho detto, lo ripeto. Faccia tosta. Siete i protagonisti ed è importante che parliate apertamente. Ma ho vergogna, mi sentirà il cardinale che ti sente, è abituato. Vi assicuro che il vostro contributo sarà preso sul serio. Pope Francis wants attendees to ponder the issues that cause youth to leave the church or abandon their faith, as well as to brainstorm creative solutions. Un uomo, una donna che non rischia, non matura. Una istituzione che fa scelte per non rischiare rimane bambina, non cresce. Rischiate accompagnate dalla prudenza del Consiglio, ma andavano avanti. 
senza rischiare, sapete cosa succede? A un giovane invecchia, va in pensione a vent'anni. Un giovane invecchia e anche invecchia pure la Chiesa. The Pope also heard the reports of five young people about the Church's situation in their continents. And finally in the news, the Vatican has released statistics of Pope Francis's pontificate covering the period from March 19, 2013, the Solemnity of St. Joseph, the day officially inaugurating the start of his pontificate, to March 19, 2018. Among the more notable statistics in just five years as leader of the Universal Church, Pope Francis has made 22 international trips, has declared 880 new saints, which includes the martyrdom of an estimated 800 Italian laymen killed by Ottoman soldiers in the 15th century. He's also created 61 new cardinals, issued 41 major documents, called four synods of bishops, declared two special years on consecrated life and the extraordinary year of mercy, and established or proclaimed seven special days, including World Day of the Poor and 24 hours for the Lord. That is a very busy five years. Well, that is all the information we have for you this time. I'm Kevin Nelson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic News throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.